positive. <laughs> Spirit says positive. That's what it's all about, you guys. Positivity, love, forgiveness, light. Hello, collective. I love you so much. You are so amazing. You're doing such a good job. You're so supportive. You treat people how you want to be treated. You want to look at the brighter side of life. You want to speak abundantly. I'm Patience. I'm your favorite psychic medium, host of Spirit News on Spotify, where we teach you micro Fred. <laughs> we teach you about your non-physicalness. I'm here with my very own spirit team, the Guild of the Golden Triangle, here to bring another one of God's messages forward to see what the collective needs to know to get a higher perspective of their linear view, all while doing psychic development at the same time. And it makes me so happy to do so. It makes me so fulfilled to be able to I uh, hope that these messages help people understand emotions, help people with spirits out of orange emotions, help them to understand themselves better, and that's all I could ask for. Oh, I'm here for you, okay? Okay, spirit, where do you want to go? You know what? Let's do the archetypes. Spirit, thank you so much for being here with us. Remember, time is fluid. So this could be past, present, or future. And energy has no gender, so you got to put it where it fits. And if it doesn't fit, don't make it fit. It's okay. There's lots of other messages for you. Not every message will be your message, but this is going to be for someone. Hi, AA. So this is going to be for somebody. So we got to remember that. They're not all about you, okay? <laughs> headache. Headache. Spirit said headache. Someone could be having a headache. Maybe they're having a migraine. Maybe they're going through a stressful time. Let's find out. How can we help? Oh, we have a starborn. Oh, oh my God, thank you. Well, um, I'm an actress in the earth school. You know, the whole world is a stage. <laughs> So this is the starborn. So spirit said headache. There may be somebody who's going through a hard time right now. Um, maybe they're having. Uh, this look, doesn't it look like bullet holes or something. Not that it's literal, but I look like an actress from Shameless. I've never seen that. I'll have to Google it when I'm done. So, or this could be looked at as um, some kind of project. This could be some kind of project or a person. This project could be a little different. It could be, it could be <clears throat> something unusual. It could be um, something that's still in the beginning stages. Um, it could be something that has a lot of potential. It's a starborn. It's something. Hello, Miss E. Oh, thank you for subscribing. Thank you. I love you guys so much. I don't know yet. We've so far, we're reading the energy. We're seeing what spirit wants us to know. It looks like we may have a starborn. This could be a person or a project. It could be a, someone's um, brainchild, someone's egg, someone's. Um, some, wait and see. <laughs> spirit said, wait and see. This could be something that is distorted. Um, it's got, you know, the watercolors looks a little distorted. It may be deafening, Spirit said. Spirit said this distortion is deafening. So there may, seems to be some kind of misunderstanding about a creation, someone's idea, someone who, an idea or a person that might be different, that might not be like everyone else. Okay, a starborn. Uh, some this project though has a lot of potential, or this person has a lot of potential. They're just being um, uh, watered down. They're being watered down. They're not being actualized at their truest potential. The empty room. Hello, Tyler, Svetlana, hey, hey Miss E. Thank you for being here. I love you so much. Four four on the clock. Eleven. 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 All right, let's see. So I have the empty room, which look at this. This is this has stars. This has stars, and this has stars. I think that. I think there's a forty. 40. Mm. 
I think someone could be going through a dark time right now. They could be looking to the stars for answers. They could potentially have some kind of um, block put on them, some kind of blockage, um, some, time, some kind of um, uh, something's holding them back. Something's holding them back from actualizing their true potential. What's going on here? Or you could look at it like an empty room. It's um, this idea or this thing that's um, distorted has a lot of empty room to be filled, you know, to fill it up with with uh, ideas, with hope, with uh, love. What's going on here, Spirit? The queen. We have a queen in reverse. So we have somebody that may, we have somebody that may be stopping a starborn or an idea from coming to fruition, from actualizing. Um, a queen in reverse can is is um, the opposite of maternal. So somebody who could possibly it also has red around it. Someone who wants to um, stop someone's foundation or muddy someone's foundation or. Someone who um, may not, uh, someone who's not good at creating, they don't, they don't have creative force. Someone who is opposite of um, an empress. There's also a snake. There's also a snake in a hand here. So, phantom. phantom, spirit says, phantom. This person could be a ghost of themselves. Perhaps they have a lot of wounds that need to be healed as a represented by all the black. Um, they could possibly not know their own worth, and so they project onto other people. They could be projecting onto the starborn. Um, they could be potentially putting blocks on a starborn or making some kind of... Um, making it harder for this person to create whatever they want to create. Oh, they're a healer. The starborn is a healer. How do you know if you, it could be yourself? Um, well, it's not my situation. It's not my situation. I tried, I cleared my field and I asked spirits to tell me what the collective needs to know. So it's somebody out there. It's not my situation, but, um, I mean, there's always like parts of it that could be because we're all connected in that way. But it's definitely, uh, I try to detach myself so that way I'm not reading myself. Um, I don't, I've never been good at reading myself anyway. Whenever I read myself, it always ends up being about someone else anyway. Um, that's why I, if, if I were to get a reading, I'd, I'd go to someone else. It's, it's harder to read yourself because you can't, a lot of people can't detach and they, nope. yeah, Spirit said, nope. Yeah. So the story is um, we got a star born here who who may be under some kind of duress or some kind of, um, I don't want to say attack, but they may be um, being deluded or um, distorted by a queen in reverse, a queen in reverse. So some um, there's a mother figure or a maternal figure or, or a woman that is not maternal. She's very distorted. She may be a little insecure, a little jealous. Um, she might be harboring some kind of um, resentment or uh, creating some kind of blockages for this person. I think what it is, is space between them. I think what it is, is um, they're so different. They're so different. This person might not understand what this person, who this person is. And that can often create um, a, a distorted perception of someone. When you don't understand something, um, when you don't have the ability to get a higher perspective, um, it, you can perceive something that's um, awesome as being not awesome, you know? So, so we'll see. But the starborn is a healer, maybe a natural born healer, someone that... Um, is uplifting that has the ability to uh, connect with higher happens. happens. As we said, it happens. You know, people are born healers. It that happens. They're called shamans. You know, all throughout history, um, 
every tribe had a shot has a shaman and it's very prevalent in other cultures um, this could be a Western, maybe this is in the Western world where it's not as um, accepted or uh, open about it. So um, there could be a kind of a, almost, I guess, some kind of, um, what's that called when, when you have different belief systems? It could just be a different belief system where, you know, this queen believes one thing, maybe they're religious, maybe they're, they don't understand how someone could be born a healer, maybe they feel like you have to, like, go through some kind of course, or go through something to be able to be that, so they have um, a limiting, um, that maybe this block is on them, you know, they have a block. Probably not. <laughs> oh, no, spirits are probably not. It's definitely a block on this healer. This healer is a starborn. So we know now, we know now that as we go further into the future, that there, that we're not alone in the universe. Okay. Hey, Baba. <laughs> God bless you. Hey, Baba. Thanks for being here. Um, we know that there's other life in the universe and we're starting to understand reincarnation and energy, which we teach you on Spirit News. We teach you about energy and your non-physicalness. It's our belief um, through sp our spirit guides that have told me that, and what I believe is that we reincarnate and you can, um, your soul can be very old and you can reincarnate into a human vessel to help humanity ascend, to help to have a higher consciousness than some people around you naturally to be born that way, a star born, someone who um, doesn't isn't from around here. They came to help um, raise the consciousness of, um, <sighs> thank you, to raise the consciousness of earth and everyone around them. And there could be somebody who's stuck in an old uh, way of thinking, an old paradigm, something that's outdated, that isn't able to wrap their head around um, what a healer is, what a healer does. And so um, they could perhaps, if this is the creator um, under the empty room. So we could have just a real difference of beliefs here. Um, just a real... Janice. Janice could be significant. Um it's just a, a limitation. It's a limiting thought form being projected onto somebody who who can't help who they are. This person was born this way. Um, they're star born and they're coming into their um, healing arts perhaps and they're being blocked. Yeah, the destroyer. So this doesn't have to be taken so negatively. It's just somebody who um, isn't capable of seeing outside of their own world. That isn't um, that's currently in a space of not being able to perceive things that are maybe of a higher consciousness or something that is definitely preventing them from seeing a gift. Because um, I also have. Uh, these stars and then this star. So they're trying to, they may be possibly trying to, oh, there are two, there are four coins on here. So maybe they have the old thought form of, you know, you have to go through certain like, um, you have to go through a, a rigorous training process to actually be a healer or or some, this person thinks you can't be a healer for, maybe because you don't make money at it. Maybe they're very in their head about, you know, the 3D world. You, it, to be successful, you have to make money and you have to go to work forever. And they have a, just an old way of thinking. Thank you, Spirit. Tell me more. What's going on here? How can we help? How can we get a higher perspective of a linear view? Spirit news. Let me see. We'll try these ones. I have a lot of different cards. We'll try something different. All right, let me see. Thank you so much, Spirit, for being here with us. Please continue giving us some messages. The Void. I have the Void and the Empty Room. I have the void and the empty room. So, 
Hmm. You know, spirit looks at the void in two ways. You can either look at a void in a bad way if you're if you're in a low state of mind, or you can look at like a it doesn't have to be empty. You fill it up with what you want. So this person is in a state of um, this person three o'clock. Three o'clock. Three. The Trinity. This person's in a state. Uh, the Starborn is in Talk their is in their training stage. They could possibly be filling their void up with. Um, maybe they're talking to spirit, maybe they're taking courses, maybe they're taking a class, they're doing something to enhance their healing abilities, they're starting to come online, they're starting to realize that they may have um, the ability to heal or maybe an inclination to be a healer, um, maybe they want to work with energy, maybe they, they're starting to discover themselves, but I think they're being judged, yeah, they're getting their power taken away from from somebody or maybe they're feeling disempowered because um, people don't believe them or they're start they're getting pushed back connect to the heart they're connecting to their heart and um, this is on top of the queen and the destroyer so there may be some kind of disconnection from these people's heart chakras that are preventing them from accepting someone the way they are um, they may perceive it as something that's ridiculous, that isn't real, that is silly. And so they're projecting that onto somebody that is finding enjoyment in that, I guess. Okay. What else? What else, Spirit? Tell me what else. Oh, I, have, I have too many choices. It's like... I can't even choose. Oh my gosh. Get us out. I'm sorry, I'm trying. I have too many choices. Okay, here. We'll do it's a fun story. Okay? It's a fun story. Let's see where this is going. So spirit, why is this person so against them being a, being a healer? When was a time you someone said something hurtful to you? Oh, so this queen may be, um, brainless. spirit said brainless. This, this queen spirit said they're brainless, but let's be nice. They're, they're unable to perceive what you do because that possibly you said something hurtful to them. They could be mad at you because you may have said something that offended them. And so they're finding it hard to have, um, to open their heart to you. So they're, they're having a hard time getting past something you may have said to them. Have you ever heard of a hairbrush? I like my hair messy. You don't like it? It's the way I like it. It's like curly. I like it. It's okay if you don't like it. I don't mind. I love my hair this way. It's wild and free like me. Okay, I lost that card, so I don't know. So what did um, the Starborn say to this mother that hurt their feelings? Tell us about a time you felt like a new kid. Oh, you might have told them that they were immature. You might have told them that they were being immature, even though they could be older than you. They might be holding a grudge against you because you said something to them about maybe they were handling something. Yeah, yeah Spirit said, yeah. They possibly weren't handling something in a mature way. And you may have told them they're acting like a child or they're being childish. And I think that really hurt their feelings. I think that um, they've been holding, maybe this could even be subconsciously. This is why we're getting a higher perspective. Um, so we can help heal. We can help understand our emotions and why we operate in certain ways. So you may have said something that may have been, it may have been truthful at the time, but maybe your delivery or the way you said it was something that really hurt their feelings. It really made them feel inadequate. It may have made them feel like uh, you think you're better than them or um, something like that. Um, and it, you may have told them that they were childish. 
Who would walk out of a blind date based on appearance alone? Um, this person's a little uh, a little insecure, a little maybe shallow or superficial. So they might not be able to, re to really take constructive criticism or um, be able to um, accept certain things said about them. I don't think you meant it in a, in a mean way. Maybe um, demonic. this person said demonic. This person could possibly just be a, a low consciousness. They have some wounds they have to heal. You you told them something that may have been truthful, but they are, have a hard time accepting things like that. What's a risk you've taken that really paid off? They might be upset that, well, they're upset because they're holding a grudge against you, but I think it's um, what's also making them upset is that you're taking a risk um, of something that's actually working for you, that you maybe they didn't take a risk in something they wanted to do and they they still have regret about that or resentment and it kind of threatens them that you're doing what you want to do. So that, again, that could be a subconscious thing that they don't really um, understand at a at a level they can perceive it at, but that's why we do this, to get a higher perspective of people's emotions. Uh, what's your favorite quality about someone here? They may be threatened that you have um, self-confidence, that you have self-love. If you're a healer, you definitely will have those qualities. Um, it, might, it might be something that's threatening to them, something that makes them feel a little uncomfortable, something that something they should be inspired by, but because they're not sure how to process it, they might take it as like a competition or like you're, you're just like a threat because you're confident, you're self-loving, you speak your mind, you may have said something to them that hurt their feelings about them being um, immature about something. Who is uh, most likely to get their own Netflix comedy special? This person's dramatic, they're dramatic, they might, um, you know, do a little more, they might be a little much, they might, you know, go a little nightmare. too far sometimes, for instance, they're a nightmare, because they, they don't know how to let go, they don't know how to take um, constructive criticism, and they don't know how to accept somebody who's um, as confident as you, so they're having a hard time doing that, how can we help, how can we help them? Thank you so much, Spirit, for being here with us. Please tell us how we can help. We're not here to judge anybody. We're not here to make brothel. anyone feel bad. Spirit said brothel. Who could get called the wrong name and not correct the person? So, you may have, um, Spirit said brothel. This person could work for a brothel. Maybe that's one reason why they're, um feeling a little insecure because they're not doing what they want to do. They're doing something they don't want to do. Um, so we have to keep in mind that everybody's on their own journey. We're not here to judge. Um, you know, I'm sure they didn't wake up one day and say, I want to be in a brothel. No, I'm sure that just life circumstances got them in that position and they see you and who would get the, who would get called the wrong name and not correct the person. So, you're probably, this person, this person wants everyone to see them a certain way because they're ashamed of what they do. So you might have been somebody who sees through them because you're a healer, you're a starborn, you have the, you have the a gift of discernment. So they may have taken your ability to do that as an offense to them because they often want to be perceived as something else because they could possibly work in a brothel and they're very insecure and um, again we're not judging and so they may have taken it upon themselves to kind of um, cast you out or knock you off your peg because you threaten their whole life and the way they've been living. Spirit said widow. This person could also be a widow. What is something that has to change in our society? So, this person is 
this person's scared to change. This person is realizing that, you know, they didn't live the life they wanted to live. They didn't do what they wanted to do. And it, they're projecting it onto somebody who's doing what they want to do and living the life they want to live. And they could be projecting that in a way where they're saying, no, you're wrong, I'm right. You know, the way I'm living is right and the way you're living is wrong. But it's only because, it's only because they're hurt. They're, it's only because they're hurt because they didn't realize their own potential. If your ego were an animal, what would it be? Yes, right over the destroyer, a wolf. This person's ego would be a wolf because they're in survival mode. They're... Um, being predatory, they're being competitive. Kelsey. Kelsey could be significant. They're seeing you as someone they have to take down instead of seeing you as an inspiration. Thank you, Spirit. But it doesn't have to be that way. This person is just hurt, you know. 70. 70. They could be older. They could be much older. Um, what? Who has the worst sense of direction? They could potentially be trying to misdirect you in what you want to do, like make you feel uncomfortable about what you want to do, maybe um, tell other people what you do is ridiculous, is silly, because um, they want to try to make you stop doing it um, because they want to alter your uh, direction and what direction you go in. So they're doing it out of their ego, though. They're doing it because... You're doing what you want. You're a nice person, and you told them, you told them a truth about themselves that they may not have wanted to hear, um, and that's something that the healer has to learn as well. Um, you know, you can't just because you see something as a healer doesn't mean that that information was invited or asked for. So you really have to be, as a healer, you have to be mindful that not everybody's ready to receive a message. Not everyone's ready to be open to what you see and you have to have the gift of discernment to, and control to really not overstep your boundaries when it's not time for that person. So this, this starborn, this healer may have spoken out of line or said something that may have been truthful at the time, but maybe they, you know, they had to change their, their tone or spirit said untying. So they may have Untied. They may have um, opened up. A, they opened up a wound with this queen that wasn't ready to be opened yet, because they weren't mindful of that. Of that, and what I'm learning as on my own journey of being a healer is that you have to really be mindful of that when you're talking with people because as a psychic medium I feel energy and I can feel a distortion in people's field but I'm I've come to a place where I've realized that's not my problem unless that person directly asks for my help or invites me to you know help them in some or give them my opinion then I just keep it shut you know, it's not my business. Everyone's on their own healing journey. It's not my job to heal every person I come into contact with. And I shouldn't, you know, I, I shouldn't take on that burden. And that's probably what this healer's in the void for because um, they're learning that in real time. They're probably learning through um, a real lesson, you know, which is how we all learn. So this person's trying to knock your direction off its course because of their ego. And you don't have to be a healer. You could like, you could just have a healing energy. You, you could just be very open-minded consciously. You could be a counselor. You could be a doctor, a lawyer, like somewhere where you're being of service and you have the ability to, um, feel more, you know, to be more uh, empathic, more compassionate. You don't necessarily have to be like an energy healer like me, but it's something like that. Tell us about a time you heard someone gossiping about you. Yeah, under um, terrain. terrain, under what's something that has to change in our society. This person may have blocked you through gossip. 
I think I said that earlier. They may have just told people that what you do is ridiculous or that you're a ridiculous person, that you think you know everything. And it's just because they were offended by, they're just offended by something you said to them. They took offense to it and they didn't like it. So they kind of acted out or they're acting out. This could be past, present, or future. So I don't know. Take it as it resonates. So what's going to happen? What's happening with this situation? When was a time that you rose above someone's perception of you? I told you. <laughs> I told you. This person, this queen in reverse, subconsciously, I can see this from a higher perspective, they know that you are seen in high honor because you are self-confident, you're self-loving, you have a high moral compass, whatever it is that you do, people gravitate to you, you might have a bright energy that people like to be around. And so this person subconsciously, their ego wants them, wants you to see them that way. And because they Alexander. don't, because Alexander, and because they don't feel that way about themselves, they aren't perceived that way unless they are putting on, you know, who's the most likely to get their own Netflix comedy special unless they are acting a certain way. So they don't understand that they can totally be that way by he confirmation, by healing their wounds and choosing to be that way. But because they're coming from their ego and they're still, they haven't had their ego death yet, which everybody goes through, even, even healers and starborns, you can't be at that level of consciousness without your, um, letting your ego go through its dark night of the soul. Um, this person hasn't had it yet. So they want to be perceived the way you are, but at the same time, they, they don't act in that way to be perceived that way. So it really hurts their ego, and that's why they operate out of their ego. So what can we do to help them? Tell us about a time you sent a personal provocative photo. They may get a lot of their attention by being provocative or maybe showing a little more skin or um, more like sexual, you know, they're, they get their attention on the ten outside, spirits. 10 spirits. And that might be how they've operated for a while, so um, they don't know how to like get out of that. If your life were a Broadway musical, what would the opening number look like? Tell us in detail. They may feel like you do, you, they may feel like you're fake. They may feel like you're the one doing the monkey dance, you know, like you're the one who's um, pretending to be something you're not. And it's only because they're threatened that you could actually be that way and that they're not. So they don't know the details or they just don't, they really just don't know how you became this way. And they're, they're in their ego so much that they think that you're being fake. But at the same time, they're wondering the details of how you could have come to this place. So it's really conflicting energy. I think that's why the void is here. Because this person could potentially be in a void of self-discovery, of realization, they could be approaching their ego death. Have you ever witnessed a miracle? I told you, come through spirit. We have to remember that everybody's on their own journey and people aren't going to be at the same level as you. And it's not, our, like I said, it's not our job to push, agree. agree. It's not our job to push people into consciousness that they're not ready for it's a it's a gradual ascent and it comes with every lesson learned and you just you know you rack up the lessons until you get to a point where you realize I got some explaining to do you know I got some things I gotta work on so this person this reverse queen who looks at you 
like you're faking it, like you you can't possibly be that confident, that nice. They're starting to, they may be going through an ego death. And the spirit said, have you ever witnessed a miracle? <laughs> Which is beautiful. That's awesome. That's what we want. And it might really be scary to, to go, it is really scary to go through an ego death because it shatters your reality. It shatters how everything works for you. It shatters everything you knew to be true. And you kind of have to start over on a new level of understanding and kind of build from that. And you can't go back. You can't go backwards. So you kind of push this person into your push three, three, three on the clock. You're pushing this person into an ego death. The number three. The number three. The Holy Trinity. The Guild of the Golden Triangle. This could be being divinely guided. Tell us the worst gift you have ever received. This person wasn't ready for it. Or maybe they were, but they're just fighting it. Um, the fact that you came into their lives and kind of called them out on something they did. When they weren't ready to accept that level of truth. Um may have pushed this person before they were ready so that's why it's it seems ill received um you're not being received well because of it what are you passionate about right now <laughs> this person thinks that by stopping you it'll stop the way they feel they're like well if i can make collective um if i can prove collective is not confident is not doesn't have self-love then I don't have to really go through this but it's kind of like a snowball effect like once it starts there's no stopping it it just has to keep going forward you know what else spirit I like these kind of readings because it's like self-development tell us about the one that got away oh Oh, I'm going to cry. Oh, this person. This person. Stranded. Stranded. They're feeling stranded by you. You may have had to create some distance between you and them. Because of the misunderstandings. Because of their inability to perceive you. Um, they may have had to separate yourself. And so. Or this could be looked at as two ways. I'm hoping that. It's because they miss you, but it could also be that they had a plan to do something to show that you're not who you say you are, but really um, you got away, you separated yourself. Maybe you started to feel the divide between you two and you created a boundary, um, but it is over. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, good. Thank you, Spirit. I'm very happy about that. 30. 30, okay. So I was going to say it is over witness to miracle. So I think they miss you. I think they miss you. I think that they, their misplaced anger towards you and the grudge they were holding towards you was just out of a place of insecurity and unhealed wounds. And because um, you're a joy, you know, you're, you're somebody who's vibing high on your high flying disc. And um, tell us the worst gift you have ever received. You've given them the gift of an ego death. But, <laughs> but they're like, I hate it. This feels awful. What's happening to me? How do I, you know, they weren't ready for it. But at the same time, they need your help to go through it. So hopefully we can help them right now understand. Because everybody goes through it. Everybody and even if you don't go through it in this lifetime, you'll reincarnate and it might be the next lifetime. It might be three lifetimes from now. It's it's really different for everybody. Who would you trust the least if left alone with your significant other? Kids. Kids. So, they may not trust you right now with... Um, they may have... This could go either way. You have to take it as it resonates, but um, there could be kids involved. Maybe they don't trust you with children, or maybe you don't trust them with children, um, with your children. You have to take it as it resonates, but that could be why they're missing you, because maybe you had to take the kids away, or maybe you had to um, separate the kids from this person because of you know the way they were acting towards you. 
Um, and I think that that really, too many. too many, Spirit said, too many. I think that gave them some lessons to be learned. I don't think they expected you to do that. Um, I think you took the, you chose to take a high road and that kind of confused them. So um, they could potentially be missing their, their the kids, maybe that they're a grandmother. Um, but you knew that it, in this point of their consciousness that maybe the kids shouldn't be with them as much what was your favorite family gathering as a child oh oh I'm gonna cry this person misses being with you and the kids they do that was some of their favorite times oh, they have a lot of emotion right now they do they're really missing you. I think they just, um, like I said, were operating out of their ego. You kind of <laughs> brought on an ego death they weren't ready for. You called them out on something that they were doing that was immature. They didn't want to let it go. Get over, here. Get over here. Yeah, they wanted to hold a grudge. So you had to take the kids away. I get it. I get it. But this person has to, you know... Some lessons are harder than others, and, you know, lessons... Kathleen. Kathleen could be significant. Whose taste in porn is dirtier? <laughs> so this person is, um, this queen in reverse is quite provocative. Um, they could be just overtly sexual, not, um, not because they want sex or anything, but just because that's how they get attention. So you could have possibly felt that that was something you didn't want your kids to be around or didn't want your kids to see or to um, be an influence around your kids so that could have um, you, that could be something that you called them out on that they didn't like that you you know you're a little you know you're a little provocative around the kids you you act you know kind of sexual um, you you know you wear a really revealing clothing around the kids I don't want it you just don't you, there's lots of things about this person, this grandmother perhaps, that was making you feel like you had to separate yourself and the kids. Okay? If you can make up a euphemism for a penis, what would it be? I'm going to skip that one because I don't even know what that means. What's a euphemism? Let me see. Let me look it up. What is a euphemism? Euphemism. A mild or indirect word or expression substituted for one considered to be too harsh or blunt when referring to something unpleasant or embarrassing. Okay. I see what this is saying. So, like I said, you were, you were, this person is indirect with their expression. They substitute one, they substitute things they want to say with being too harsh or blunt when referring to something unpleasant or embarrassing. So they might just be um, very vulgar, you know, they might say outlandish things. Three o'clock. Three Thank you, Spirit. They just say outlandish things that um, are maybe offensive or maybe... I had to take the kids away and get non-molestation order on them. My ex was... Yeah, so this, this could be about maybe their mother or something or... Um, hello. hello. Spirit says hello to you, June. Thank you for being here. So, this person could be, you know, very provocative, very vulgar. They're just, um, not a high vibrational person, but they're starting to miss, um, the family gatherings together. They're starting to miss spending time with you guys. Thank you. And they're starting to um, realize that you're a joy to be around. So, they had to kind of lose you to understand that, I guess. What else? Oh, yeah, look. And right here, absence. I feel like a part of me is missing without you. Yeah. This person misses you. All right. Let's see. So, how can we, how can we help? What's this person going through? How can we help? Spirit. 
So they're in a uh, wheel of fortune in reverse. They're just having some setbacks and delays. They're having unwelcome change. You know, they don't like that they're away from the kids. They're having bad luck. Um, they're having a lack of control because they're in an ego death. Most likely. Most likely, Spirit said, most likely. So that's okay. Everybody goes through it. And they're going through an ego death because of their foolishness. Because um, their fear of the unknown and their impulsiveness. They're, they're just very young and at a soul level. They're very um, naive and immature and inexperienced. And this is why we reincarnate. So we can, once you learn a lesson in each life, it gets added to your soul bank. You know, it gets added. So you learn the lessons. This person's learning a lesson right now. You're teaching them a lesson by breaking away from them and creating that boundary. That's why boundaries are important. And it got them to go in hermit mode. It got them to go in their um, soul searching, to do some self-reflection, to be able to understand how they got here and what's really important to them. Because this is a very dramatic, shallow person. <laughs> Spirit says they're a fool. And I have the fool right here. I have the fool right here. Spirit says they're a fool. They're a fool for acting that way. They need to... There comes a time where you have to take responsibility for your actions and and accountability for the you know the mistakes you've made. This person has went a long time not doing that, so now they're doing it. <laughs> but because they're they're immature, they may have backstabbed you, um, bad mouthed you. We had a card about gossip. Um, they were bitter and. They have an inability to cope. They don't have coping me mechanisms like you. And that's why you had to sever ties because you were hitting a wall with them. And they had an inability to really see your, your, that you're a blessing or that you didn't mean any harm. Um, they just were holding a grudge against you because um, you called them out on something that they didn't want to admit was something that they needed to be called out on. Um, maybe up to four things. Spirit says four o'clock, but um, they're in ten of swords right now. They're it's, it's an ending, you know. It's instead of trying to work it out with you, they held a grudge against you and kind of bad mouthed you. They may have betrayed you. They may have made enemies against you. Um, they used you as a doormat. Again, we're not judging. We're not judging. We're just saying what the energy says. Um, but this person now is in solitude. Okay? And they're thinking deeper. They're um, trying to be patient. They're realizing that they can't keep operating this way. Um, they're looking for inner guidance, you know, maybe they're asking for guidance, they're getting enlightenment. They're getting enlightenment that they created this situation and they are seeing that you didn't really have a choice but to walk away. You did what you're supposed to do. You took the higher ground. You took accountability for your actions and you separated yourself and said, I don't want to be a part of this until you can, you know, get mature enough to handle right. things handle things more on a higher consciousness. Okay? What else? Spirit? How do you want to end it? Oh, that's good. But, um, Six of Wands, they're recognizing, they're starting to, um, they're starting to applaud you for your achievements. They realize that um, you have the advantage and they want to praise you. They want to support you. They want to uh, maybe even apologize to you. Knight of Cups. Yeah, they want to invite you over. They want to, um, they want you to follow your heart. They want you to be happy. Uh, they want you to, um, they realize you're full of ideas that maybe they, that threaten them at first, but now they're starting to see that you're just trying to be happy. 
you're just trying to do what makes you happy and um, they feel bad they feel bad about trying to stop you about um, trying to make you seem like something you're not um, and they want to take action towards you to relieve that so that's awesome so that's up to you collective you know you'll have to gauge where they're at and you know keep those boundaries at a um, you know a nice but safe level so um, that's why you have to create boundaries flaws. with people flaws everybody has flaws everybody nobody's perfect so we have to really be mindful of that and let people grow in their own time and take their own journey okay i love you guys i hope this helps bye